I've got this grin on my face because I'm really excited about this trip. This is one for the books. I am headed something like 5,000 plus miles this week. It is Tuesday evening and I am headed to California to join the Tesla Takeover event. And this event is the biggest one of the year. I'm really excited to have had the opportunity to go. And if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drive. And now that we live in Florida, I can't just drive from the house that I'm in. I'm in central Florida. You can't go from Florida to California and not go coast to coast, right? Am I crazy? Yes, I'm freaking crazy. But what I'm gonna do is instead of heading straight west right from here, I'm actually gonna go straight east because I'm like an hour and a half away from the beach. So I really need to make this coast to coast. And this is gonna add three hours to the trip. It's absolutely stupid to do this, but I wanna go coast to coast in a Tesla and I wanna prove that it can be done and it's not a big deal. Furthermore, I'm gonna be living in this car this week. Now, I'm gonna be sleeping in this car tonight. I'm gonna sleep in this car tomorrow night. And then Thursday night, I'm actually gonna be staying with a friend so I will be able to use their shower and things like that. So that's the plan. I'm gonna show you what this looks like and then I'll show you the setup back here. All right, you ready for how ridiculous and crazy this is? It's something like 24 charging stops. Maybe it's 26, something like that. It's a lot of charging, but I'm going to be headed east to the coast and then up and straight over. I'm going to be hitting, obviously, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California before hitting LA and just straight north there, about an hour north of there is where I'm ultimately headed. So I'm actually headed to Cape Canaveral right now which is an hour and a half away, straight east to the beach, gotta get to the ocean, and then I can head out. So the plan is this, I really would like to have made it out of Florida tonight, but that's just not gonna happen. It's gonna be way too late. So something like um, Mariana, Florida, maybe just at Tallahassee is kind of my target tonight. I need to get as far as I can and then the next night, I'm gonna make it to Texas, probably somewhere just outside of San Antonio, maybe before, maybe after, and then Phoenix for Thursday night, which is up here. And then I will, on Friday morning, spend some time there and then drive all the way to California from there for the event on Saturday. And the best part about this nearly 3,000 mile one-way trip is I get to do it coming all the way back because I'm nuts. I don't know why anybody would do this, but I love driving in this car. And a lot of this channel was built around the idea that EVs are here, EVs are capable. I hate hearing the myths about you can't travel in an electric car. Are you kidding me? I'm about to go coast to coast in this country, a trip I've always wanted to do. And now that we have a Tesla, there's no other car I'd rather do it in, and that is because of autopilot, and it is because of the charging infrastructure and the cost of that. Unfortunately, I don't always get to see the charging cost because I have too many referral miles. So if I did, like I used to, I would be able to show you exactly how much this costs, but I believe a better route planner suggested it's gonna be about $300 in electricity for supercharging to make this trip. Now I can camp in the car because the car has camp mode, which unlike a gas car, you can run the HVAC in this car without worrying about being poisoned and dying in your sleep in the back of the car, which is pretty awesome. And the mattress, you may already know, is a mattress that I helped develop. It took over a year to make this mattress. It is made specifically for this car and it works in the Model 3, but it also works in the X and the S as well. But this mattress is super comfortable. I used it on my 3000 mile trip where I went down to Giga, Texas. I went up to Colorado Springs and then back over to Indiana. So I'm excited to get more sleep in this. I already put the mesh up here and this one, this particular one blocks a ton of light. So you can park underneath the street light at night and not have a bunch of light glaring in. Of course, I've got covers for the windows as well, but let's take a look at the back of the car. So as you can see back here, I've got my refrigerator and this thing comes in clutch. If you're gonna be doing long trips like this, you can see just how much I can fill in here. I've got the very important monsters for emergencies, some Gatorade and some beverages. So this thing, as you can see, it's got a divider so you can actually split this up and have a freezer and a refrigerator or you can have it set up like I do um, where it's just one refrigerator and it cools down in about 10 minutes, which is pretty cool. Got a ton of camera gear, it's ridiculous, but I've got some goodies because EVNX is coming with me on this trip. 
got some goodies down here too to give away. So shout out, if you see me at the charger, I've got some stuff to give away. Underneath here, I've got the mattress. You can see it tucked in there and that we will roll out at some point tonight. Of course, the bedding for the mattress and a nice little uh, way to get around. My uh, electric scooter down here, the Segway. So this is really nice when you're on your own and you plug in, you can actually get around. So if there's a restaurant you wanna go to, but it's not right next to the charger, quick and easy way to get to and from. Up front is pretty basic. Got some flip-flops and the snacks right here, baby wipes, which are crucial when you're camping in a car. And then of course in the front, I always put my luggage right there because it fits so nicely. I got some emergency tools and stuff like that in that bag. So that's the setup for this trip. I'm super excited. I am going to go ahead and get unplugged. I'm at 91%. I'm going to go ahead and head towards the beach and then we'll be charging about where I'm at right now on our way back, which is really stupid, but that's how this is going to work. So let's take a look and see what we got in front of us all right so we've got an hour and 27 minutes 85 miles to get to the beach and then turn around and hit the charger at turkey lake gonna go ahead and get rolling now Welcome to the Space Coast. Here on the Atlantic Ocean, three hours added to my trip just to be able to do this. But you can't go coast to coast if you don't actually go coast to coast, right? So feet have officially touched the water. And it was interesting because I'm looking over here in this direction, there's a whole bunch of things standing up. Some crazy billionaire kind of guy launches rockets or something. Would have been cool to see him standing up today, but no such luck. So get back to the car and get back on this trip because I have an hour to go to get to the next charger and I'll show you that in the car. But uh, yeah, I literally just paid a discounted rate of like 1250 to get in here just to do that. So pretty crazy, but I'm still amped. I still have a lot of energy, I'm super excited about this trip and that's what's keeping me going right now. So. I'll meet you back in the car. All right, so our next stop is now Winter Garden. So it has updated a little bit. Winter Garden and then Alachua, Florida, Madison by about 11 o'clock, I think. Oh man, that's really not great. Um, but I'm hoping to make it this far. And this is the Mariana, Florida supercharger. That will get me one stop short of making it to Alabama and time still looks okay at 1242. It did have to reset, I don't know why. But anyways, it is calculating, but I should be at the supercharger in an hour and six minutes, 67 miles. The leg to get here was pretty uneventful, but uh, 329 watt hour per mile, 70 miles. So let's get this next 67 miles on and get charged up. So here we are, we're at the Wawa in Winter Garden and it did update our route a little bit. So it cost me a little bit of time, not a whole lot, but I'm not sure why it did what it did. But anyways, we're here for 25 minutes it's supposed to be. And if you have not had a sandwich at Wawa, it's actually really good. It took me a while before I finally braved myself to get some and gas station food, huh, it was good. So I'm probably gonna get dinner there that full leg from where I'm at right now to the coast, back to where I'm at right now, roughly, 
was 165 miles, 330 watt hour per mile. The last leg was 339 watt hour per mile, but so far 165 of probably 3,000 miles completed. So there you go. Gonna go ahead and get plugged in. It is a V3 charger, which is great. Means we don't have to split. And while I'm here, definitely going to uh, open up the refrigerator I have in the back. That plugged in. Get ourselves a nice cold beverage. All right, looks like we just finished charging up. So our next stop is Alachua, Florida, and it is 111 miles away. Should be there about an hour and 45 minutes, 10.30. We are a little bit behind schedule. Uh, I left half hour late and we spent half hour at the beach. So there's an hour of the hour and a half that I'm behind, but we will hopefully make up a little bit of time, but it's not going to be possible to make up an hour and a half tonight. So we're going to keep going. I'm going to unplug now. We're at 73%. And like I've showed you guys in the past, I can't see how much this charging stop was i wish i could share that information with you but i just can't any longer so gonna go ahead and get unplugged and get moving to alachua florida Right, so we're at the charger now we arrived at 24 percent at 10 25. that last leg was 113 miles 319 watt hour per mile it's supposed to be here for only 15 minutes so 15 minutes and then on to madison florida and then where i was hoping to make it mariana florida thereafter so gonna go ahead and get plugged in this v3 it is in the parking lot of a grocery store which unfortunately is closed and it doesn't look like anything else up there is open there's really not there's a taco bell over there but on your way in there's a few stops but i'm gonna go ahead and get plugged in and uh get rid of some of this trash so here we go wrapping up charging now at 61 percent. this thing's way overcharged lately i've been noticing that it's trying to charge way more than it needs to but maybe that's because my comfort level goes to a lot lower state of charge. Supposed to arrive at 17%, which is way, way too high for me. Anyways, should be there in an hour and six minutes at about 11.45, 81 miles to go. Arrival at 18%, 62% unplugging now. here at Madison Florida supposed to be here for 20 minutes made pretty decent time and I am going to be able to make it to Mariana Florida because I feel all right it's 11 45 p.m we are in a gas station parking lot and there's nothing else out here this place is pretty barren so the nice thing is it is v3 and I'm all alone but let's get this plugged in because I've got some work to do So what I'm thinking is I should be able to make it to Mariana, which was my goal. Um, I'll just be there later than I had planned. But what I'm going to do is take advantage of the time that I have right now. And I'm going to start setting the car up with the mattress and getting things ready so that when I get to Mariana, which I'll probably be pretty tired at that point, but I'll be able to just kind of pull in, plug in and finish setting a couple things up maybe moving some things around but i should be able to uh get rolling and go to bed so that's the plan let this thing charge up and start setting up a little bit 
So just as I was getting ready to start setting things up, I just realized in this moment that I have a bit of a problem. Although I did remember all the covers for all the windows around the car, I somehow forgot the windshield cover. So I'm hoping I can figure out how to make this work for tonight. And perhaps one of the chargers will be at a truck stop tomorrow and I can find just a basic universal windshield cover. So that might be a problem. We're just gonna have to wait and see. I really like parking under big bright lights, but uh, that may not be an option tonight. So we're gonna have to figure this out. Nonetheless, let's take a look because we are done charging. So we're at 73%. We have an hour and 31 minutes, 111 miles. Should be there a little after 1.30 in the morning. Mariana, Florida. That last leg was 82 miles, 359 watt hour per mile. Gonna go ahead and unplug now at 74%. Should arrive about 20%. So we made it Mariana at 12.34 a.m. It's actually 1.34 a.m. We must have just switched time zones. So it uh, right on time, 19%, not bad. Supposed to be here for 15 minutes, but this is where I'm staying tonight. So I'm gonna get plugged in. It's not a bad spot. It's in the parking lot of like a barbecue joint, but there's um, plenty of food options. Uh, my window is fogging up like crazy right now, uh, but there's some truck stops and some hotels and all that. So let's get plugged in because we have some stuff to talk about because I messed this up pretty bad. That last leg was 111 miles, 355 watt hour per mile. All right, so like I said at the last stop, I forgot the windshield cover and that's kind of a problem. And when you're sleeping in your car, um, security is really important and uh, blocking out the windows is a part of that, at least for my strategy. So the issue there is, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel sleeping without the front window being covered and I don't have an alternative because I have a blanket that I can use to cover it, but then I wouldn't have a blanket to sleep with. So I think unfortunately, um, I'm gonna have to call around to these hotels in this area there's like four of them. So I'm going to see if any of them have a room available for tonight. And I'm just going to sleep there and try to find an option uh, so that the rest of this trip we can get back on track. And uh, the whole purpose of all of this is to save a ton of money on hotels. And unfortunately, I'm an idiot. So that's that. I'm going to let this charge up while I start calling around. Well, good morning. Had a good night's sleep. I stayed at a pretty cheap motel, but it worked out all right. I'm going to try to find a windshield cover today on the road. So let's take a look at what we have. I slept a little bit later than I wanted to, but that's okay because we're still on track. Our first stop is going to be Crestville, Florida, which is our last stop in Florida, then Alabama, the goal is to make it to Junction, Texas, which is just past San Antonio. And right now it says that'll be at 1248. So I'm still on track to make it there today. Our first little leg here is one hour and 15 minutes, 86 miles. Should be there about 930 and arrive at 20%. So with that, let's hit the road. Crestview, Florida, our last stop in Florida. It's supposed to be here for 30 minutes. It has updated the route a little bit. I'm not sure what all the logic is behind that, but that's okay. I don't mind 30 minutes. There is a Panera there, and for 
all you people like my wife, there's a Starbucks back there. So you're all set for a decent spot. It is uh, kind of a busier area for this part of Florida anyway. So let's go ahead and get plugged in. That last leg was 89 miles, 343 one hour per mile. Go ahead and get plugged in now. All right, so after taking care of some business, we are about done charging. Got two minutes left. Gonna unplug here in a minute. This next leg is two hours and six minutes, 153 miles. Should be there about noon. And we're gonna go all the way through Alabama and stop in Mississippi. So gonna go ahead and unplug now at 84%. Should arrive at 10%. So here we are in Mississippi. No idea how to pronounce that. I'm not even gonna try, but got here at 19%. We are a little bit behind because traffic was really annoying. We did come to a stop for a little bit, but it was really just hard to keep even the speed limit once we got to Alabama all the way through to where we are now. That last leg, because we were driving so much slower, uh, 155 miles, 302 watt hour per mile. So those slower speeds certainly added to the efficiency of the trip, but I'm gonna go ahead and get plugged in. It says we're supposed to be here for 30 minutes and I wouldn't normally do 30 minutes twice back to back like this, um, but it is a good spot. There's um, a bunch of stuff. We're like in a parking lot of some kind, um, like shopping and dining, I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna take the time to um, go get something to eat. So let's go ahead and get plugged in so here we are wrapping up charging here and our next stop is in baton rouge looks like a two hour drive 141 miles we should arrive there about 10 percent i am gonna go ahead and unplug at 80 percent just a little bit early we are not on time anymore it says 112 at junction texas which is our target so we're about 45 minutes behind at the moment thanks to some traffic and i expect we'll probably have more traffic as we continue. So gonna go ahead and unplug now and hit the road. Baton Rouge, supposed to be here for 20 minutes. It's a good spot, it's at a shopping center. There's a whole bunch of restaurants and stuff. Everything looks like walking distance. This charger is tucked in the back. The only issue is it looks like there's a charger that may be broken. So let's see if this one is working. Not a good sign. Let's see, come on. We're gonna be here for more than 20 minutes because there's only like six chargers and they're all full except for the one that's broken that's right next to me. Look at this, 27 kilowatt charge rate. Uh, we're gonna be here for a bit. And there's already somebody waiting, so. So the best thing to do in situations like this is to just stay plugged in and wait for one of the other cars to move and then you can take that spot, assuming there's not somebody waiting. So that's what I recommend doing and that's what I'm gonna do. But for now, I'm gonna go find a restroom and come back to the car. So here's the situation. Basically, um, these chargers are V2. So when everybody's plugged in, like we have right now, we're splitting charge. So at 38% charge, I'm getting 55 kilowatt charge rate and that is super slow. 
Still got 25, 30 minutes of charging left, and this should have been a 20 minute stop. So I should be almost done, but that's not the case. So if you look at your map and you're in this situation, it says this is our next stop. However, there's one in between and it's a V3, which means you don't split. It does say that there are two chargers out of order though. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to add this to our route. And when you add it, it goes all the way to, oh no, looks like a recent update fixed that. So what this does now is I can now split this charge and reduce the amount of time I have to stay here. So once this refreshes, I should be able to see how much time we really need. It's only 53 miles away. So at 40%, that's enough to get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this charging session up and head to this next one, which is a V3. It says we will arrive at 19%. I mean, that's way more than enough. That last leg was 143 miles, 308 watt hour per mile. Again, there's just too many people stuck in the left lane. You can't really go very fast right now. So I'm gonna unplug and I'm gonna get to this B3 down the road. So here we are in Lafayette, Louisiana, and it's in a decent spot. There's uh, plenty of places, gas stations, food. There's Chick-fil-A right there, which is always appreciated. So this stop, 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get plugged in now because I'm seeing some things on this plan that I'm not so sure I like. So let me get plugged in, we'll talk about it. So looking at our route here, it has made some funky changes. So, there must be some pretty bad traffic near Houston, which is probably not surprising, but it wants us to go to our next stop, which is only 79 miles away, and it wants us to charge for an hour. Um, I don't wanna do that. So we gotta look at a couple of options here. Um, looking at the map, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's much else on that proposed route that goes way up here and back down. So um, what I think we're gonna do is force it to go through, and I'm gonna look on my phone to see what the traffic situation is. I don't mind stopping at this charger here, but it's also got us going north of San Antonio now, which I also don't necessarily mind, depending on I'm not so sure that's gonna be great either because that's not the interstate. So there's a lot of stuff messed up right now. Just gonna have to play it out and see how we can make this work, but we are bound to be a little bit set back. This is where I wanted to stay tonight. And if I force it to that charger, let's see if it'll think through this. So there's some good news. It's already made some changes. And this can happen sometimes. Now it's saying skip that charger, stay here for 35 minutes, and then charge on the front end of Houston, pass through San Antonio, back on the original route. So let's see what time it thinks we would arrive. So we are looking at about 12.50 in the morning at Junction, Texas. So we're pretty close to back on track probably about 20 minutes. I think if I remember right, it was 12.30 a.m. that we would have arrived. We haven't hit a new time zone yet. That should be happening soon. So really it'll be like 11.50 local time. I believe that we're gonna hit mountain time um, sometime in Texas, this area. So that's the plan. I'm gonna sit here for 35 minutes and then hit this next charger in Channel View, Texas and probably try to get something to eat once we get there. I'm sure between now and then there's going to be some traffic that's gonna pop up. 
that's just the name of the game. That last leg was 54 miles, 279 watt hour per mile. Again, traffic, 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 keeping our speeds down, which is giving us obviously much better efficiency. So I'm gonna let this thing charge. I'm gonna go walk around, stretch my legs a little bit, and uh, we'll hit the road here in about 35 minutes. All right, so I found a Target here at this charging stop in Lafayette, and they had a sunshade. So we're gonna find out if it's gonna work. It's a generic one, it's two pieces, but it's one of those ones that kind of like pops out. So hopefully we can make that work for tonight. That solves that issue. So I'm gonna head back to the car because I think we're gonna make it just in time to unplug and keep rolling. All right, so exactly 35 minutes later, we are charged up and I was able to make good use of the time I had. We're at 88%, it says we'll arrive at 8%. If traffic is like it has been, we'll probably be north of that, but I'm gonna round it up to 90%. I wouldn't normally do that, but this is 194 miles, about a three hour leg. I'm probably going to pull over halfway just to actually eat dinner. So we will see, basically that's the situation. I think we're in a good spot now. It looks like whatever traffic was causing issues earlier may have already been fixed by now, but we gotta stop in Houston, San Antonio, and then this is where we're staying for the night. So only uh, three more stops uh, here, and it looks like the Houston San Antonio is gonna be another big stretch. So gonna go ahead and unplug at 88%, should arrive something like 8%. I'm plugging now. I needed to see what hit the car and um, well it's not so good I don't know what it was yet I did catch it on the dash cam I'm pretty sure I haven't watched yet but check out what it did to the car again I haven't watched so I have no idea to even guess what it was but holy cow whatever it was it hit pretty hard it even cut the film this is not paint, this is film. PPF all the way around the car. This is why I have PPF, this is why you should get it. This is the second time this car has taken a pretty big hit that uh, this film is protected. So I'm not sure. I don't see any like dents. So I think I'm actually in a good spot. This will all rub out, but yeah, that tore the film, it hits so hard. 80 miles an hour or so. Thank God we've got this film. So here we are at Baytown, Texas, in the parking lot of the biggest gas station I think I've ever seen. This is insane. But anyways, got here at 5%, and we're supposed to be here apparently for an hour. That's not going to be the case. But I am gonna go ahead and get plugged in and get that started. Again, another V3. We've only had one V2 on this trip so far, which is great. That last leg was 196 miles, 307 watt hour per mile, which is pretty good, but again, speeds. But since we're in Texas now, the speed limit is much higher. I believe it was 75, I think it's about to be 80 miles an hour. So speeds are gonna be much higher and we're gonna wanna make sure we accommodate for that with our charging levels. So I'm gonna let this thing charge up a bit. I'm gonna go inside this massive place and see what's inside, maybe get some dinner. Oh man, it's hard to tell just from the video, but uh, this smells so good. Pulled pork, so excited about this. So it was bound to happen, I guess. Uh, the bright side, it didn't happen till now, but I overcharged. I got too distracted by this monstrosity of a place, but the sandwich was really good. Uh, so good place to stop. Awesome that there's chargers here. Let's take a look at what we got in front of us. So I did overcharge because I do have to stop at this charger before making it, and I'm going to arrive with 30%, which is not ideal. So, basically, if you look at the map, that's the last charger before I get to the next one, so there's no way to split this up. 
to make up for that lost time. So it now says junction at 4 a.m. I don't know how that's possible, but uh, there's some things that are rapidly changing on the map. So I'm assuming traffic became an issue. Hopefully by the time we get to San Antonio, that is all cleared up. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get rolling. We're at 83% should arrive, about 30% when we get there. Flatonia, Texas, basically right in between San Antonio and Houston. Oh, don't mind that. I wasn't doing anything, I swear. Supposed to be here for 20 minutes. Arrived at 22%. I tried um, using up some extra energy to get here quicker, which indeed we did. Let's look at what that last leg was. 339 watt hour per mile, 131 miles. And we were kind of in stop and go, a lot of construction, so a lot of slower areas. So. I did the max autopilot speed, which was 85 for as much of that as I could. Now the speed limits are much higher out here, so don't freak out, but supposed to be here for 20 minutes. It's in the parking lot of this gas station that's got a Chester's, is that right? Chester's and Sonic and whatever. There's some options in here, but there's nothing else out here. So those are, uh, those are the options you got. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in and uh, we'll get moving towards San Antonio. So we're charged up now to 64%, should arrive at about 17%. I am gonna go ahead and unplug and get moving. 108 miles to go, should be there about 11.57 p.m. And at some point, the time zone is gonna change. I just don't know exactly where. So gonna go ahead and unplug now and head to San Antonio. San Antonio Leon Springs Supercharger at 11%. It is 11.54 p.m. It's supposed to be here for 20 minutes to make another 79 mile jump to Junction, Texas, which was the goal this morning. So we are not doing too terrible. It is about, I don't know, an hour later than this morning when we left, which isn't bad considering how long of a day it's been. That last leg, we did hit a ton of wind, um, so no surprise. Yep, 361 watt hour per mile, 109 miles. So we're gonna go ahead and get plugged in here for about 20 minutes, really good spot, um, probably during the day anyways. Looks like, I believe, a grocery store. That's what it looks like, and a whole bunch of stuff at a shopping center. So gonna plug in, and we will make it to our last stop where we're sleeping. All right, so we are charged up enough, should arrive at 14%. We're at 53% right now. 79 miles to go, an hour and 10 minutes. We are about 1.20 in the morning. Gonna go ahead and unplug now. Junction, Texas with 7% left. That final leg of today was 349 one hour per mile, 96 miles. I swear it said 79 when we left. So I don't know why it was 96 when it said 79, but I did reset the screen because it was getting a little glitchy. That happens sometimes. So 
supposed to be here for an hour it says which is crazy what i've done is i've taken a look around this area and there are some hotels um there's a holiday inn back here tucked away in the corner and i think that's where i'm gonna sleep tonight in that parking lot we're in a gas station parking lot there's a truck stop across the street there's like a motel six or something over there so um there is actually quite a bit of stuff here we are in the middle of nowhere but that's where we're gonna head so what i'm gonna work on is i'm gonna get the car plugged in first and foremost and i'm gonna get the car set up the best that i can and then head over to the parking lot so that i can just park and kind of throw up a couple more of the window covers and be done that's kind of the plan so i'm gonna get this plugged in we'll get stuff rolling and hopefully be asleep here very soon got the car all set up got the mattress going got all the uh, window covers ready to put up obviously this has been up all day but what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make sure I have enough charge to run uh, camp mode overnight and get to the next charger so I'm sitting at 75 so I'm sitting at 75% now if I left now I'd arrive at 28% it's only 89 miles so it's not very far so basically what that means is when I run AC in camp mode, in my experience so far, I'm generally using one and a half percent per hour. So I try to factor in 12% that could be lost if I sleep for eight hours, which it's already 2 a.m. So I don't think that's gonna happen, but basically take that 29 minus 12 percent now in the morning if i for some reason used a whole bunch of energy i can just come right back across the street and plug in hopefully i won't have to do that that's uh kind of the plan is to plug in right now and only right now so i don't have to do it later so i'm gonna head across the street park and get some sleep so i will pick this up in the morning so i ended up having a pretty good night's sleep as you can see all the windows are nice and blocked the front windshield, this uh, this works well enough, but you can see a lot of light gets through. But it was um, there wasn't enough light shining directly on the front of the car for it to matter. So I think it's like 7:30, so it's time to see what five and a half hours did. I ended up parking at 77 percent. So five and a half hours later with camp mode on. I think I had it on at 66 degrees, which is probably too cold for most of you, but 66 degrees for five and a half hours. Let's take a look at how much energy we used. All right, it is 7.30 and we're at 69%. So used 8% in five and a half hours. So yeah, that's still about one and a half percent per hour. That was at 66 degrees and it's 84 degrees right now. So it is a little bit warmer, but that's about the same performance that I'm used to in this car when running the HVAC on camp mode. When using the heat, it's a different story. You would think it'd be different, but heat is more efficient because, only because your body in here is providing heat in this closed space and that's helping to keep the inside a little bit warmer. So. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get everything kind of put back together so we can hit the road. it was tough to find this it was a weird off-ramp but it's in the hotel parking lot there's nothing out here as you could see on the drive-in 
but 18% supposed to be here for 20 minutes. It is a version two charger. No more V3s until I get to Phoenix, I believe. That last leg, 91 miles, 389 watt hour per mile. It is a bit windy um, on the way in here, plus 85 miles an hour, which uh, the speed limit's 80 out here. So let's go ahead and get plugged in here. don't really see like a restroom there's probably a restroom in the lobby that you can use i don't know let's charge this thing up and then our next stop will be fort stockton which is way out here and then really the big milestone is el paso so as it's sitting right now i should be at my friend's house about 10:45 my time and arizona's two hours behind where i'm at right now so it should be 8:45 local time all depending on traffic of course so 9 p.m ish uh would be a huge win if i can get there by then so we're wrapping up charging here we're at 67 percent 107 miles to go about an hour and a half should be there just before 11 o'clock we should arrive at about 13%. I am going to go ahead and unplug just a little bit early, keep things moving. Going to roll out now. here in Fort Stockton, Texas at 9%. Going to be here for 30 minutes. It is in the parking lot of a Flying J that has a subway, which uh, I'm not usually excited about, but on road trips, sandwiches are just, I don't know, they make me feel better. So I'm going to have that for lunch since we're supposed to be here for that long. 391 one hour per mile, 108 miles. It was smooth sailing, which was nice because it was 85 miles an hour, no traffic. And uh, out in the middle of the desert, it seems like. And all of a sudden, pop up. There's a whole like town here, so interesting. So we're gonna let this thing charge for about 30 minutes. And then we have one more stop before making it to El Paso, which is very exciting. That's a big uh, milestone on this trip. So gonna let her charge up, stretch the legs, get some food and hit the road. So as you can see, we're charged enough. 80% should arrive at 14%. And we have 121 miles to go in an hour and 45 minutes. So hopefully this leg is like the last one and it's a lot faster than this is even predicting. So I'm gonna unplug now and hit the road. Van Horn, Texas, 16% and a little bit ahead of schedule. I did have to stop because there were some cool places to take pictures right over here. That last leg, 122 miles, 381 one hour per mile, still 85 miles an hour, so higher consumption as expected. It's supposed to be here for 25 minutes now. I'm gonna get plugged in. There are two other cars here now, but as long as nobody else comes, we can take one more car and then we're going to start splitting. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Then El Paso, which means we will have made it through Texas as soon as we leave El Paso. So going to go ahead and get plugged in now and get this thing charged. All right, so we finished up charging here. 78% should arrive in El Paso at 15%. 131 miles, about two hours to get there. Should be there about 3.30. So going to go ahead and unplug and get rolling.
made it here to El Paso and I am excited because we're less than 10 miles from being out of Texas. Got here at 17%, a little bit ahead of schedule, made great time. I'm supposed to be here for 20 minutes to make it 90 miles here after. That last leg was 332 watt hour per mile, 132 miles. Gonna go ahead and get plugged in and while I'm charging, there's like a barbecue place here. I have no idea if it's good, but I love barbecue, so I'm gonna try it. Um, Wing Daddy's Express, a Jack in the Box, which is disgusting, and then um, a couple hotels, Carl's Jr. or whatever. There's some stuff here, that's my point. So good spot, I'm gonna plug in now, get some food, stretch the legs. Well, that barbecue is really good. If you uh, are ever at the El Paso Supercharger, this place, you can smell it in the parking lot, just like the smoked meat just filling the air and it is super, super good. It's got a hint of spice, but it's not hot. I and mean, then it was just, whew, that was good. So anyways, we are wrapping up charging. So let's take a look at what we have in front of us. So this next leg is 90 miles. I'm gonna let it finish charging here for a couple more minutes. I know we do have to go through a mountain to get there, but we're at 60% right now. And at this state of charge, we should be able to arrive in New Mexico at 14%. It's not too bad. I'm gonna let it go to 15%. I'm gonna unplug. So here, one more percent at 61, and we're going to pull out and get to New Mexico. Either about 352, hour and 18 minutes, 90 miles. Made it here to Deming, New Mexico. Supposed to be here for 30 minutes to make it to Wilcox, Arizona. So we we're just chugging along, doing pretty good. That last leg there was 375 watt hour per mile, 92 miles. So gonna plug in, it's in a Valerio, Valero gas station, whatever it's called. There's nothing else out here. We're in the middle of nowhere. But there are some really cool looking horses over here, which is really awesome. So gonna plug this in and uh, Stretch my legs a little bit. We're at 76% now. We would arrive at 10%. I'm gonna give it just another minute and then we're gonna go. We have an hour and 51 minutes and 134 miles to get to our next stop in Wilcox, Arizona. And then one more charging stop before I arrive at my destination for the night, staying at a friend's house. This is not his address, this is close by. And uh, I'll be uh, very happy to be able to have their shower for the evening. So with that, let's go ahead and get unplugged and get on the road. So we're here at Wilcox, Arizona in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn Express. There's not a lot. There is a gas station on the way in, but not much here. Uh, so keep that in mind. But we continue to make really good time. Uh, 20 minutes to charge, arrived at 10%. That last leg, we did 357 one hour per mile, 135 miles. Supposed to be here for 20 minutes before hitting our last supercharger of the day in Tucson, Arizona. So I'm gonna go ahead and get plugged in. There's nobody else here, so shouldn't have any issues charging. And I'm going to stretch my legs and we will get right back on the road. All right, so I was busy reviewing dash cam footage. I've got some good stuff to share with you, but I am charged enough to keep going. 58% to get to Wilcox, Arizona. We should arrive at 19%. Only 91 miles, an hour and 17 minutes to get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug now at 59%. Should be there at 19. <laughs> All 
All right, so once we got through that traffic, we arrived here at Tucson at 22%. Um, a lot of slow driving there for just a bit, so it didn't kill us too bad. I do need to be here for 30 minutes because I need to get to where I'm going, plus make it to the charger, which it looks like that charger is not far. It's only a 4% difference, so not far at all. So 30 minutes should be good. I am going to plug in. There's a car show going on, so there's some entertainment while I'm here, which is cool. Always appreciate that. This last leg was 93 miles, 293 watt hour per mile, predominantly because we were in stop and go for a good stretch of that and couldn't really go too fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in now. And by the way, it's the first V3 charger of the entire day, which is nuts because uh, before we got to Texas, every single one except for one of them was a V3 charger and out west in the desert, in the middle anyways, they're hard to find. So there we go, plugged in. And we're rolling. Let this baby charge for a little bit and we will finish this up for today. So we're wrapping up charging here. It says two more minutes and I'm just gonna go ahead and call it going to be about two hours, almost two hours to get to Phoenix where I'm headed in Phoenix on the north side. 130 miles to get there. We are at 83% now and should arrive at 13%. So what I'm going to do since it is getting dark um, and for privacy reasons, I'm going to pick this up when I get down the street from the house I'm going to. I have an address that's close to it and I'm going to wrap up today's trip when I get up there. So we're going to call it there. I am going to unplug and get rolling now. Should arrive at 13, 14% at 9.30. So let's see how we do. Hopefully I can make up some time. Oh, don't you just love Hondas? always a freaking honda every time unfortunately for me my biggest issue right now is this wheel since i am 2200 miles away from home it's kind of a concern it is wobbling right now it's holding air which is great and i hope that the service center in phoenix has a replacement wheel that i can just swap the tire over because the tire looks fine it looks like and thank God for PPF. So <laughs> this trim piece will have to be replaced. That's not a big deal, but I don't see any dents somehow, but this PPF saved the freaking paint, no doubt. And then of course, nice little love on the front. God, I love Hondas. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to be in a positive mood, positive attitude, positive vibes. I'm basically here at my friend's house um, I'm down the street to finish this up for today. So got into a little bit of a fender bender and uh, of course it was a Honda. You don't have to ask. So trying to get that sorted out. Fortunately, I was able to make it here. I do have quite a vibration in that wheel. It did hold air all the way up here to Phoenix. So that's good, but I do need to get that replaced because I'm um, many thousands of miles away from home and finishing this trip. So I need a secure situation. So with that, let's take a look at how we did. All right, so the last leg was 131 miles, 314 watt hour per mile. So far on this trip, 2,330 miles, 338 watt hour per mile. Now for the rest of the trip, I have a bit to go. Um, let's see here. We have a number of stops through Arizona into California and then finally at the destination. And if I left right now at 10 p.m., I would be there at 7 a.m. So I guess that's what, nine hours left in this trip. Now, the only thing is in the morning, I'm going to go to the Tesla Service Center here in Phoenix and hope, 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 fingers crossed, that they have a wheel in stock so I can just have the tire swapped over. The tire looks like it's still good, no damage on that, thankfully. Um, but if I can just get that wheel replaced, 
Um, I'll feel a lot more comfortable uh, finishing this trip because I have a lot of driving left to do. So with that, I'm going to sign off for the evening and I'm gonna pick this up in the morning. All right, so a little situation update for you. I am back on the road. Thanks so much to the Tesla service team in Mesa, Arizona. They somehow had a wheel and I think what they did is a car that was scheduled to be repaired later in the week. I think they ordered a new wheel for him and let me have his wheel or her wheel, whoever. So thank you so much to the Tesla team in Mesa for hooking me up and getting me back on the road. Being this far away from home, it's kind of scary to figure out what am I gonna do? So new wheel is on and I am plugged in charging so we can get back on the road and make it to California. And I'm really not too far behind schedule. So let's take a look at the charging situation and uh, see what we have in front of us. All right, so it's 100 degrees, so the AC is blasting. So we are sitting here at the charger. It is V3, finally into V3s again. It's supposed to be here for six more minutes to make it to Quartzsite, Arizona, which is the last stop in Arizona. And as it sits right now, we would arrive at the hotel at about nine o'clock. I do need to add one more location into this map because as you recall, this is a coast to coast trip and I'm going to try to stop somewhere right here and officially have a coast to coast drive. So I'm gonna let this thing charge up. We are going to leave here shortly for a two hour trip, 138 miles to go. Probably gonna arrive around 10% or so I would guess. So I'm gonna let this finish up charging and we'll hit the road. So here we are in Quartzsite, Arizona. Pretty cool setup. There's a ton of chargers here, probably about 30 or so. Um, not great amenities, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there are restrooms and stuff, but it's like a Carl's Jr., a Burger King. You're in the middle of the desert, what can you ask for? Supposed to be here for 30 minutes, arrived at 10%. That leg, since I charged, 324 watt hour per mile, 140 miles. So gonna be here for the full 30 minutes. Um, because there's not great amenities right here, I gotta go over to that truck stop to try to find something better, I think. So I might be here a little bit longer than 30. We'll see. Gonna get it plugged in, leave the air running while I'm uh, doing my thing here. So I did overcharge just a little bit. I'm at 84%, which means I will arrive with 13% at the next stop. It doesn't sound like I overcharged, but it was done charging a few minutes ago. Uh, two hours and 22 minutes, 156 miles to go. Gonna get rolling right now. So good news and bad news. The good news is Cabazan, or however you say it, California, is uh, here. We're here. V3 charging, good. The bad news, there are casinos like right all over. We're basically in the parking lot of a casino, which is probably bad news for a number of people, myself included. Good thing I'm on a schedule because I would love to go in there and have some fun. Anyways, supposed to be here for 25 minutes charge this thing up to get to our last charger on the way in now there is a charger by the inn it's downtown that i'm gonna have to plug in when i get there just to get charged up that last leg was 351 one hour per mile 157 miles and uh, it was pretty good it's very hot it's now down to 100 it was like up to 104 degrees so very warm, very, very warm. It's probably gonna slow down charging just a smidge. So I am gonna get plugged in and I am gonna keep my air on and I won't let you do this till you're plugged in if you're under 20%. So let's get plugged in. All right, so we're wrapping up charging. 74% should be at Thousand Oaks, California through Los Angeles. 
um, at about 17%, about an hour and 45 minutes, 128 miles. I don't know enough to say that this is going to work out from a time perspective. It's 4.50 p.m. on a Friday. Every time I've been to LA, traffic sucks, so I'm not holding my breath. But we still are looking at 9.30 arrival at the Madonna Inn. So fingers crossed that this works out. Gonna go ahead and unplug now. so we're here in Thousand Oaks, California. I need to get plugged in quick because it's very busy. There's a number of uh, stalls, but it looks like this is a V2 charging station, which is unfortunate. So hopefully we can get charged up before more people come. Um, still doing all right on time. Supposed to be here for 20 minutes. That last leg was 287 one hour per mile, 130 miles total. So pretty good, especially considering the driving I did, which I will not be showing on the channel. It was very busy in LA. So let's get plugged in. Plenty of stuff around here. You probably, if you're from the area, you know where I'm at. So lots of food and stuff. So let's get plugged in, stretch our legs a little bit. All right, so we're all charged up 74%. We have our last stretch to get there two hours and 17 minutes 139 miles and that's just to get to the beach and then we've got just a small little jog over uh, for another 10-ish uh, minutes to get into San Luis Obispo so I'm staying at a Best Western I think is what I just booked and it's pretty close so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug should be at the beach at about 9 48 p.m. 28 percent unplugging now exactly sure what happened maybe I missed an exit or maybe traffic or something but I got rerouted like five times and so now I'm at this charger up here in the mountains somewhere I have no idea where I am but um, still have quite a bit uh, in front of me to get uh, to the beach so anyways long story short I need to be here for a little bit because this will be the last uh, stop here and it looks like I have 61 miles to the beach basically um, an hour to drive so I'm gonna plug in and let this thing charge for a bit I'm at 20% it's a pretty big charger it's in a parking garage which is nice uh, but V3 plug this in There's a uh, bunch of loud cars here. So anyways, gonna let this bad boy charge up a bit. All right, so here's the deal. I am charged up to 60%. There is a charger in San Luis Obispo where the event is. So I'm not gonna charge it too much more because right now I will arrive at the hotel at 47%. So I'll round that up to 50. And I'm gonna pick this up at the beach and officially have gone coast to coast and I'm so excited. I cannot believe that I did this. It did get me here about an hour behind schedule, unfortunately, but hey, rolling through LA, that's probably a win. So I'm gonna go ahead and get unplugged and I'll turn this back on as soon as I'm at the water. So unfortunately you can't really see it, but you might be able to hear it in the background. That is the ocean. That is the Pacific Ocean. 
officially gone coast to coast in our Tesla Model Y. And so many people talk about how hard it is to travel in electric cars and electric cars, blah, blah, blah. I just did it all by myself. All by myself, drove coast to coast. And I'm so thrilled to be here right now. It's quite an accomplishment that I've wanted to do for so long. I just never in my wildest dreams thought that it would be in an electric car someday. So here we are on the coast and I am so thrilled to have made it. What an absolutely epic trip this has been. And I still gotta make the trip back home, but for now, I'm going to make the last several minutes down the road to get to the hotel to get some sleep. Let's take a look at how this trip went by the numbers. So for this whole trip, here's where we landed, coast to coast, 2,976 miles, 332 watt hour per mile, which is pretty respectable, especially given the fact that we were doing 85 in sections, a good chunk of the middle of this country due to the higher speed limits. So pretty decent overall, almost 3,000 miles one way. 989 kilowatt hours. So I think that that's pretty awesome. I am so excited to have had the opportunity and the chance to do this trip. So tomorrow's gonna be a lot of fun. I get the chance to interview Sandy Monroe, which I'm super excited about, exclusive interview. I'm gonna be posting that video as soon as I can. Uh, of course, all the awesome Teslas that are going to be at the event and hopefully some non-Teslas as well. There's a lot of awesome electric cars out there that are not Teslas and as more and more of those start hitting the road, it's quite an exciting time to be getting into cars. So with all of that, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.